Hi, I'm Dr. Julia Lehman, and I'm Associate Professor of Dermatology at Mayo Clinic. And it's my pleasure today to talk to you about our Blood and Bone Marrow Stem Cell Transplant Dermatology Clinic, or BMT Clinic. We specialize in the dermatologic care of patients who have undergone a stem cell transplant, which is often performed for leukemia or lymphoma. So patients can get a variety of skin rashes following a stem cell transplantation. One of the most common types of skin rashes is called graft-versus-host disease. And this is a condition in which the donor stem cells start to attack the host or the patient's body. When this occurs, patients can get a rash and they can also get involvement of their GI system, which shows up as diarrhea, or of their liver, which can cause their liver blood tests to be abnormal, or they can get jaundice or yellow skin. When they get a rash, sometimes it involves the palms and soles, and occasionally it can involve the rest of the skin on the body from the head to the toes. In order to diagnose graft versus host disease, we will often perform a skin biopsy, which is a straightforward procedure that can be done in clinic and has relatively low risk. Sometimes the skin biopsy will confirm a diagnosis of acute graft versus host disease, and then we often start by treating with topical corticosteroid creams as well as with wet dressings, which can make the steroid creams work that much better. Some patients will benefit from the use of UV phototherapy, which can be administered in a dermatologist's office. When a patient develops a severe rash, then we'll partner with hematology and oncology to change the patient's systemic immunosuppression, such that the graft versus host reaction is calmed down. Patients following stem cell transplantation can also develop other rashes, and one of the next most frequent types of rashes that we'll see is a reaction to a medication. Now, sometimes these can be itchy, and sometimes they can look like red blotches on the skin, similar to graft versus host disease. Occasionally, a skin biopsy will be useful in helping to separate out these two entities, as well as carefully examining the time course of the rash and other clinical factors. Other rashes that occur in this setting can include infection, and so we'll carefully screen patients to see if they have a bacterial, fungal, or viral infection that could be causing the rash. And then finally, some patients will develop a recurrence of their lymphoma or leukemia in the skin, and this can also look like a rash. Because of the difficulty in diagnosing some of the rashes in this circumstance, it's important that a patient following stem cell transplantation who develops a rash be seen by a board-certified dermatologist for expert care. Another rash that can occur following stem cell transplantation is chronic graft-versus-host disease. And unlike acute GVHD that usually occurs within the first 100 days following transplant, chronic graft-versus-host disease often will take about three months to start to develop and sometimes may occur several years following the transplantation. Symptoms of this may include some tightening of the skin, dryness of the eyes or mouth, or discoloration of the skin. When the tightness of the skin is over the joints, then it's important that we involve physical therapy and occupational therapy to maintain range of motion and flexibility of the patient's skin and joints. We also like to involve hematology, oncology, and our multidisciplinary care specialists so that we optimize treatment of these patients as well. One reason why you may want to come to Mayo Clinic for your stem cell transplant and for your dermatologic care is that we really excel in providing multidisciplinary care to these complex medical patients. We work very well together as a team and have excellent communication back and forth to make sure that we come up with the best customized treatment plan for the patient. If you'd like more information on skin care following stem cell transplantation or on graft versus host disease, I would recommend that you see our website at mayoclinic.org.